and I worried all night. He said, for heaven's sake, let her have the 50 bucks and forget. You don't have to do it. And I said, yeah, I think I do. So fortunately, I grew up, um, you know, learning that you do what you say you're going to do. And so uh, she had said to me, now you have to tell him to fail to me. And that was a big deal for me because uh, I didn't really drive on the big highways. Because why? I mean, I took care of the kids while well, Dick drove. And so I, she had to fail to me in Morristown. And that was a, I, then I had to drive up 287. We lived in Somerville then, or actually Hillsborough. So I thought, okay, she said, you can do it. Dick said, you can do it. He worked at Bell Labs. And we had one car, because we couldn't afford another car. And um, so I had to take the children to, with me to take the car, to get the car. And of course, three boys are wonderful in a car at two, six, and seven. I don't know if you have that experience, maybe you don't, but our kids were very active. And so they bickered and everything, which was fine when Dick drove, but not when I was driving. So anyway, I got him back, they went to school, and now I'm taking Stephen, and we're, he's three, two. And we're going up to Morristown. And I remember the girl who rec recruited me was really cute. So I figured they were all gonna look like that. I finally found a skirt in my closet, but they were like teeny, like you wear now. <laughs> so that, I mean, I'm little, little, I mean, little skirts. And um, so I, put that on, she said, you have to wear a skirt. And so I thought, well, all right, I'll do this. I'm just going to go to the meeting, do my five classes, and quit. And fortunately, um, fortunately, I stayed with it. But So I'm driving up. I take Steve to my mother-in-law's to babysit. And, and my director had her meetings in her kitchen. Seems like so long ago and so many times I've told this story, but it was very significant to me. I figured they're all gonna look like her, right? And she was in a she was single in a two-family house, and so I'm climbing up the stairs and I'm thinking, oh, they're all gonna look just like her. So she opens the door, and that's the first thing I'm doing is checking these people out. <laughs> and uh, we sat all around, just like a round table like you're at right now, in her kitchen. And um, so she introduced me, and I sat down, and I'm, like, checking them out. And I thought, oh, well, okay. Some were really, really sharp, but some were kind of average. And I thought, well, if I work on myself, I can maybe fit into the group. And so I'm just settling and thinking, okay, I didn't get lost. I drove up here. It was okay. We didn't have any trauma. Stephen was fine. And then she said, and now we'll start the meeting with the Mary Kay song. Well, what do I know? I don't know anything, right, about a Mary Kay song, and maybe you all haven't heard it either, uh, because we don't do it anymore. But in those days, you needed that to build street core and energy, right? So she says, we're going to stand up and sing. So they stood up around a table in her kitchen, squashed in there, and they started with, I've got that Mary Kay enthusiasm up there in my head, right? Now, let me tell you, they didn't just sing it. They were like hopping around and, you know, wiggling their bottoms. And I'm thinking, oh boy, now I've really done it. I thought, these poor people. I mean, at least I, I mean, I have something that I do. I spend time with my neighbors and we talk about everybody in the neighborhood. Um, <laughs> Anyway, they sang, and then they sat down, and the next thing she said, I have to share with you because I'll never forget it. <laughs> she said, and now we'll have crow period. <laughs> now, I grew up in the country, and the only thing I knew that crowed was a rooster. And I thought, if she gets, if they get up and they go, woo, <laughs> I am definitely leaving. I don't care what I said. <laughs> But of course they didn't. Crow period is a time when you get to share what has happened exciting for you in the week past. Mm -hmm. And so once I realized that and I listened and they were all talking about their class and who they met and this person that they recruited. 
And I thought, this is fun. This is pretty cool. And they clapped for them. Well, I hadn't had anybody clap for me since I graduated from college. And I thought, you know how you feel when you're going nowhere, when your life's on hold? Maybe some of you feel that way. You know, nothing's really happening, but it's going to. Right? We're fixing to get ready. We just have to get everything together, get everybody organized. And that's the way I was. But Mary Kay got me intrigued. And I thought, okay. So I did my classes. This was in January of 71. And then Sue Vickers came to town. Sue Vickers was my senior director. Sue Vickers is the original Miss Go Give in the company. And she was a phenomenal woman, an incredible motivator. And um, she went on and on about seminar, and she said, you have to go. Well, seminar was like, might as well go to China. For me, from here to Dallas, leave these two children and this husband who can't function without me. <laughs> well, don't you think we make ourselves indispensable, right? Not so much now. Maybe you're all so modern that you don't, but... No, yeah, see, that's the way I was. I was like, well, that's what his mother did. I thought, I have to do the right thing, right? So I'm thinking, but I really would like to go. And Sue said, you need to go. Now, at this point, I had not recruited anybody because I was having fun. Why would I get somebody in here and mess this up, right? I mean, I was getting the applause at the meeting. I was selling. I'm thinking, this is really great. I like this. But if I bring somebody in and they just whine, I don't need that. I have neighbors that do that. So I didn't recruit. Plus the fact that I kept looking at these people because they laughed. They laughed all the time. They had a good time. I'm thinking, this cannot be real. You know, not that I was skeptical by nature, but I had a lot of S in my personality. So I was more worried about my family, for those of you who know the DISC. So anyway, bottom line, Dick, I talked to Dick. I said, I'd like to go. I really want to go. Now, nobody was going from here that we all knew. You've got to know, I hate to even ask you where you were in 1971, because most of you weren't even a thought. You were one year old. Thank you for your information. <laughs> what guys that years go fast they really do and you can't do a thing about it not a thing about it and so you need to really look at what you have in your hands right now because you hold an incredible opportunity amazing so anyway I Dick said that's fine you can go but you have to make the money I'm, and I'm not taking vacation so you have to get a babysitter you have to pay for that and you have to um, make the money for the flight. So I said, okay. I mean, I was, I figured I could work on that, you know. I mean, I work on him is what I mean. <laughs> but what he said, and so he said, I'm going to make you a chart. So he made me a chart, like a thermometer. So I figured out how much I needed. And I said, no, there's one more thing. I really want to go to the awards night. Now, now, everybody can go to the awards night. But you didn't used to be able to. It used to be only the Golden Goblet winners. Yeah, that was all. And you had to order $1,000 in one month. Now, that might not seem much to you, but that was, like, unbelievable to me. And so I worked on it. I booked classes, and I, I thought, I'm going to do this. And I worked with the chart. And I will tell you right now, I am a big one for having a chart because life happens to all of us, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got to realize every single person up here had things happen in their life that delayed them, that sidetracked them. Yeah, if you have a goal, a poster, a miracle chart, whatever you want to call it, where you can see it, you will get much more done because we rationalize anything. And so anyway, on my refrigerator, because I was fixing meals for everybody all the time, that's where I was, um, was the poster. And I, what happened was, 
and my husband was amazed. He was kind of enthused and not enthused, but he was amazed that I was making the money. I don't think he ever thought I was going to do that. So he didn't have to worry about me leaving him with the children and everything. <laughs> so, but I was able to do it and make some money. And so I went and 